Welcome back to Alvaro's Garage. Um, so today's project is going to be engine removal. Um, we're going to go ahead and finish taking off a few accessories, exhaust. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much ready to come out. So doing a little bit of research on the best method to remove an engine. A lot of people um, recommend just dropping the, the K-frame that holds the engine in place and just drop it from underneath the car and then lift the car over it. Um, but I'm still going to pull it out through the hood or through the, should I say, through the engine compartment, which is my typical method for almost every car. So I'm just going to proceed with that method. Should be easy enough. Uh, I'm going to have my brother-in-law come over and assist me. So, yep. Should be fun. We're just about ready to pull the engine out. We believe we got everything out of the way. Uh, next step is just to remove the hood. But yeah, it's gonna be, I think the last time this little engine is inside this car. Gone ahead and pressure wash the engine bay, um, having it soak again with some degreaser. But overall, pretty good, successful day. Yeah, garage is a mess, but car is just about ready. So I'm gonna clean up the engine bay, paint it, um, and re replace some suspension bits. Um, I'm not sure we call it the the part that connects to the K member to the lower control arm um, but yeah so do some suspension work clean it up paint it and then she'll be ready working on getting the engine bay prepped and cleaned up um, one thing I had to do is remove the header but the header goes through I think it's a drag link um, that ties the two uh, I guess so Doing it with the engine out was not too bad, um, but these, I feel sorry for the person who had to install this if the engine was still in place. Um, it seems like a, a big pain. So one thing I had not originally budgeted for and ended up doing was getting some new headers, so about dug headers that go over the, the steering arm. So I won't have to struggle with, you know, popping the steering linkage out to install headers. So, here's the, the toe, toe link and the pivot arm disconnected. So, I should be able to drag the header out, which goes through. So, yep. Little by little, get everything cleaned up and hopefully maybe throw a coat of paint on today, if not by tomorrow. First time using a spray gun. Uh, I think it came out pretty good. So maybe another coat. I'm still debating. I guess it means how much paint I have left. But overall, I think it came out pretty good. It's already painted a K member. I'm just gonna eventually pull off what I can from the firewall, bag up everything, mask it off, and, uh, and paint it. Okay, so I got the engine prepped for paint. Um, I went ahead and masked off all the areas uh, I needed to, exhaust ports, valve covers, etc. Um, so yeah, I'm actually pretty nervous about this step because um, if I screw up, then I have to live with it. So my intent is to paint the engine uh, Mopar red to match the original 273. So yeah, I'm gonna take it easy. My plan is to do maybe two or three quotes of paint and uh yeah maybe one coat a day and uh yeah i'm actually pretty nervous so really don't want to screw up but i got everything masked off i went ahead and cleaned the block with uh, brake cleaner and then uh, acetone so should be good to go so yeah went ahead and 
and got everything ready. So spark plugs, I swapped out the ones I'm going to use with some uh, used ones I had um, floating around. I guess I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to good used parts. So these plugs, I guess, are just going to be painted over. And uh, yeah, so yeah, just get started. Let's get it painted. So I went ahead and took apart the transmission to get access to the spline. So this is what I was talking about, the original 67 and below shaft 0 0.76 inches. Um, the spline part is 0 0.78. On the 68 or 69 and new, I believe it's 68 when the game came out with the 318. The input spline is the input shaft is 0 0.81 and the spine section is 0 0.86 so about 70 thousandths bigger than the 67 with the 273 so gives us a little bit more uh, torque capability i found this out by chance because i had rebuilt this transmission but to save time and you know reduce downtime i bought a transmission off craigslist and i hadn't realized that the you know the input shafts were different so Went ahead, rebuilt this transmission, put everything together, and then the torque converter wouldn't fit. I'm like, okay, no problem. The guy from Craigslist gave me his torque converter. So I chucked on the torque converter, then the torque converter wouldn't actually fit into the block. Um, there's a machined hole that the little nub goes into the crank, and well, it's a little bit smaller on the 273 than it is on the 318. So as a result, I had to, you know, reduce the, or use the original 67 spline on this transmission. So I'm gonna go ahead and do is, essentially swap over the spline. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move over the, the clutch packs and everything else. So yeah, overall, the transmission has about a thousand miles and at least the bands look almost with zero wear. So it's a good time, at least I did a decent job. So here's the clutch pack. And you can see there's virtually no noticeable wear. You still got the the logo and the, you know, date code. So it's made in, uh, Looks like 16th of March in 2015, made in the US. So, stage one clutch pack, still in essentially like new condition. Like I said, this car has about maybe a thousand, or this transmission has about a thousand miles since I've been through it. So, looks good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this clutch pack into the 68 and newer spline or a drum. So, I have the newer spline and uh, put it back together. But overall, transmission looks good inside. So, all right, got everything put back together. So, essentially swapped out the input spline and drum, um, swapped over all the clutch packs, um, replaced the oil pump with the 68 and newer. Um, yeah, so got everything back together. And just gotta seal it up and the transmission side of this will be done. Okay, so mocking up the motor mounts. So the passenger side is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna have to drill a hole here to line up with the ears on the block um, since it's missing a hole. But other than that, this one for the most part lines up pretty well. So, but the one I do have to modify is gonna be the driver's side. So on the driver's side, there's two things that I need to correct. Um, so one is the ear-to-ear -ear spacing on the Magnum block is shorter or is less than the 273 LA motor. So what I'm gonna have to do is weld in a bracket where my finger is. And the other issue is the ear on the back, I'm not sure you can quite tell, but it doesn't align <laughs> with the ear on the block. So here's, here's the motor mount mounted in a missing material, right? So I'm gonna add in a metal plate and extend it up so that it actually mounts to the ear on the block.
right? Well, the engine's just about ready to drop in. So, modified engine mounts with the new plate, new mounts, the heim joint that I'm going to use for my torque strap. Um, engine blocks painted, got the commando valve cover, so I went ahead and respated them black. So, everything's coming together pretty nicely. So, engine bay paint came out pretty good. Um, one or two little runs, but they'll be blocked off with uh, at least one of them underneath the battery tray. So, I'm not too worried about it. It's definitely a giant improvement to how it looked before. So, the manifold's about done. Just gotta wrap them, and the engines and transmission's ready to drop in. So, I'm gonna try to knock that out sometime this week, if not by this coming weekend. So, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.